ever found yourself needing to access your object data over a file sharing protocol? Perhaps your goal was to consolidate old and new backups, or maybe you were looking to perform big data analytics against data that was originally written over a different protocol. If you're faced with situations like these, stay tuned to hear how Nutanix objects can help. Hi, I'm Steve. In this video, we'll take a look at the multi-protocol support that was added to Nutanix objects in version 3.3.1 Specifically, this feature facilitates NFS access to your object store with no need for any kind of gateway device. Let's take a look. We start off by going into Prism Central, which is where we manage objects from. We choose the object service from the drop down menu. And we can see we have an object store up and running, version 3.3.1. I've already created access keys for a user called S3 user. So now let's jump into our object store. The first thing we need to do is explicitly allow our NFS client IP addresses. So we select the allow list and add client. Let's go to our Linux client workstation and capture its IP. So we'll copy it and paste it. And setting the bit mask will allow you to add a range of client addresses, but I'm just adding the one here. So now it's time to create a bucket. We click on buckets, create bucket, and give it a name. Now it's important that we specify NFS access at the time of the bucket's creation. And then we're presented with some options relating to identity and permissions. Now, when NFS clients create files in the bucket, the relevant Unix IDs are applied. But with S3 clients, there's no concept of Unix IDs. So this section sets a catch-all Unix ID for any data written by an S3 client. And click on default access permissions. Here we determine which file operations our NFS clients may perform and we'll leave squash options as they are and hit create. And we can see our bucket has been created. Of course, we also need to grant our S3 user access to the bucket. So we choose the share option under actions, find our user. And I'm going to give them read and write because I'm feeling generous, save that. The bucket is now accessible over both protocols. Let's look at the S3 client first. I'm using the built-in Nutanix Objects browser, but any S3 client works fine. I've just logged in as our S3 user. There's the bucket we created, and there's nothing in it currently. So now let's go to our Linux client and create an NFS mount to the bucket. First up, let's confirm there are no active NFS mounts, and there aren't. So we're going to access the bucket as the current logged on user, NFS user. To save time, I've already defined this mount in the file system table. And we have the object store's IP address, name of the bucket, and you can see that any user on this system can mount the bucket. Let's proceed with the mount. And we'll jump into the directory serving as the mount point for the bucket. There's nothing in there just now, so let's copy some data across from the local machine into the bucket and just to confirm that that has been written. Now let's check what the S3 client sees, quick refresh, and there is our data. And our S3 client can download it. Now NFS users can also create virtual directories into which files can be written. Now these are not really directories, that's because object storage employs a flat namespace, but the constructs provided so that file clients can operate as they would like to. So on the NFS client, we'll just create a directory and move our file into it. And then you can see how this is represented in the S3 client. So again, we're just mimicking a file system structure. Now let's share in the other direction. We upload a file to the bucket using our S3 client. Go back to our Linux terminal and check. And there it is. And note the Unix ID associated with the new data is the one we specified for all S3 users earlier on. And it really is as easy as that. Simple, powerful, multi-protocol access to your object data. Ideal for consolidating an application's old NFS and new S3 data sets onto the same easily managed platform. Think backup applications, for example. And where you have a legacy application writing, let's say, log data over NFS, and you later want to perform analytics against the data set over an S3 connection. Or, same scenario, but with the protocols reversed. Ingest occurs over S3, 
and the analytics is done over NFS. What these scenarios have in common is the data does not need to be modified by the application once it's been written. And this is where Objects Multi-Protocol is an excellent fit. If you have file data that will need to be modified after being written, then Nutanix Files is a much better fit. Files sits alongside Objects in our unified storage suite and is a fantastic solution for general purpose file sharing. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Be sure to check out the description for links to more resources and like and subscribe to the channel for more videos on Nutanix Unified Storage.